good afternoon. I'm uh, pretty honored to be standing up here after having that amazing video play. I want to thank Kevin Johnson, KJ, for doing that amazing video for all of us that really highlights what we need to do. Well done, KJ. What calls to me is soloists are never symphonies. And that's really why we're all here, is this collective power that we all have. So I'm Heidi Sanborn. I'm president of the SMUD Board of Directors, and I represent Ward 7, which is Arden Arcade, Carmichael, Antelope, Foothill Farms, and North Highlands, a very diverse area from pretty wealthy to have has some real challenges. So this means a lot to me. Um, and I've got with me today Vice President Rosanna Herber from the SMUD Board and also Greg Fishman in the back, so I want to recognize them as well. <laughs> And I want thanks to Valley Vision uh, for holding this vital event. Your work brings the community together to tackle the tough challenges that we're all facing and create solutions. And that's the only way we're going to do it is by all coming together. And it's fantastic to see so many of you, our community leaders and partners here. And I, think, I want to thank you for all the work that you all do individually, because I know a lot of you here, and it's amazing what everybody's doing here individually, but collectively, it's very impressive. Many of you probably know that at SMUD, community is in our DNA. We are your community-owned utility, and by the way, we're always, right now, 49% below our neighboring utility and price, so hopefully that's also very uh, positive for the community. Um, and we also, our very purpose is to improve the quality of life in our region. It's literally who we are. And that purpose is also why we've committed to the zero carbon plan by 2030. It is the most ambitious goal of any large utility in the country. And we're very proud of that. However, the board has been clear that we're not going to hit this goal at the expense of anyone. We're going to bring the whole community with us. And in fact, we've got a community impact plan that will detail how we will reach our clean energy future without leaving anybody behind, which is important. <laughs> we're going to do it all at once. <laughs> and equity is a constant driver for SMUD. A few years ago, we launched our Sustainable Communities Initiative. A lot of you are probably familiar with it, and a lot of our staff are out all the time at all these events, um, and focusing on developing sustainable communities within our region. And that initiative was developed because of the 2018 Brookings Institute study, which found that out of the top 100 metro areas in the country, the Sacramento region ranked 67th in growth, 71st in prosperity, and 84th in inclusion. So we had some work to do. And we knew at SMUD that we had an important role to play to make sure that we're creating energy solutions that were environmentally just and fair for everybody. So towards that end in 2018, since 2018, we've invested $32 million in our community to help address these disparities. $32 million. I don't know how many other utilities are in investing like that. And we've made significant investments in regional economic and workforce development and focused on educating our region's youth about zero carbon careers so that they can become the next generation of green energy leaders, which is a huge future in this country is going with green energy. We have also focused on equitable access to all electric technologies through our community outreach and partnerships with many of our partners here in the room. We've also doubled down on our support for property and business improvement districts, or PBIDs, to support our small business owners, which is also key. So, have our efforts worked? The most recent Brookings Institute study showed things have significantly improved since the 2018 study. Sacramento went from 67th to 22nd in growth, and we went from 71st to 28th in prosperity. But the really big change was in inclusion. We went from 84th to 5th in the nation. So congratulations to all of you. This is everybody working together to improve the quality of life for everybody in this region. Today's conversations create the kind of collaboration necessary to advance equity, prosperity, and sustainability here in the region. And SMUD is proud to collaborate with Valley Vision, and I want to thank Evan and her amazing team for putting this on today and all the work you do all year round for these kinds of efforts. Um, and we've got, we need actionable regional strategies through the Community Economic Resilience Fund. And that is next up on the agenda. So thank you to Valley Vision for bringing us together. I'm excited to see what we all come up with and making sure that we actually not just talk about it, but we take actionable, uh, real action to make it all happen and improve the community. 
So now, with that, I'd like to introduce Renee John with Valley Vision and Ebony Benzing with Los Rios Center of Excellence for the next panel on economic resiliency. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heidi. Our region's very blessed to have SMUD as a strong partner with a level of investment, unprecedented investment as a utility in our region. I'm happy to be here today. I'm Renee John, Managing Director at Valley Vision, along with Ebony Benzing, who is the Interim Research Director for the North Far ne North Center of Excellence um, at Los Rios. And before we start, or as we start, I have a very important question to ask Ebony. Ebony, mm -hmm. why was the skeleton sad? Because they had no body to trick or treat with. Challenge accepted, Evan. <laughs> We're very competitive at Valley Vision, so you know we just had to land that one. Um, all right, I wanna make sure the slides move along with me. I'm gonna be talking to you about the um, Community Economic Resilience Fund, which was recently renamed the California Jobs First Initiative. So that will now be what we call it in this presentation, as long as I uh, don't mess up and call it SURF again. So um, I'm here to talk to you about California Jobs First and the work we're doing with that. Um, Ebony will shortly be sharing some research information that's coming out of that initiative along with some of her own research. And um, then we will be seeding this section with some community conversations that you can have at your tables about inclusive economic development. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about, uh, most of you may know about SURF, but just in case there's folks in the room who don't, and I do need to give a shout out, we have um, two members of the state California Jobs First team, I already screwed up, didn't I? I said SURF. There's two members of the California Jobs First team right over there. Uh, they want to wave their hands in the air, so they are represented. And while Ebony and I are standing here, I do want to say that there is a specific team at Valley Vision that's leading the effort um, on this, and it is Emeritessa Bravo Aries, Alana Ramsey, and uh, Darlene Meza. And so they have helped create this presentation and are, are with us in heart up here at the stage. Surf came, oh, darn it. California Jobs First came about as a response to the COVID crisis and was created to promote a sustainable and equitable recovery from the disparate impacts of the pandemic. We all saw laid bare what had been occurring in our communities and it was impossible to ignore. The challenges magnified created an imperative for a new approach to economic development. The purpose of SURF is to build an equitable and sustainable economy across California and foster long-term economic resilience in the overall transition to a carbon neutral economy. Like Heidi just talked about, green jobs are the jobs of our future. The components of this initiative are high quality jobs, being equity centered in both processes and impact, the low carbon transition that is upon us, and building a roadmap to attract additional investments into our region. Our region for purposes of California Jobs First, nailed it, is Calusa, El Dorado, Nevada, Placer, Sacramento, Sutter, Yolo, and Yuba counties. It's an eight county region. So we're at a pivotal moment. As economic disparities continue to deepen and economies continue to shift, transforming entire sectors of industries, we need to ensure equitable processes and access across our region to these jobs and the jobs of our future. The solution, we have an opportunity through California Jobs First to create a shared regional vision. Untucked earlier during the lead from any seat um, conversations about having a common definition of thrive. This is what we're talking about. The place we need to start is a shared vision for the economic success of our region. We also need to center the voices of those who are experiencing the disparate impacts of our economic inequality that has existed for a long time. The state has positioned this funding 
with an imperative that community voices be at the center of the processes. And we need to create more accessible, high quality jobs in sustainable industries. Our opportunity is to leverage this moment and this funding provided by the state community jobs community, jo California Jobs First funding to set our region and communities up to thrive for years to come. The goals of California Jobs First are, one is to create a collaborative for collective decision making in our region, and that is something that is currently in the process of being set up. We are also creating a regional roadmap for economic development based on a move toward climate resilience, or we will be doing that together, all of us. We want to again attract investments into our region, so uh, California Jobs First is the seed investment that will hopefully bring plenty more investments from both the federal and state level. And we want to center on the creation of accessible, high quality jobs that can benefit all of our community members. Our regional progress so far includes, the first was securing the $5 million planning grant. Uh, so someone had to actually step up and put the processes in place to bring this level of funding to our region. And we were able to do that together in a collaborative process. Valley Vision is the convener and fiscal agent, but we aren't the only one doing this work. We are all doing this work. We needed to establish a collaborative of over, we established a collaborative of over 130 organizations. Many of you are part of that collaborative. And if you're here and you're not part of that collaborative, we want you to get involved. We have funded 18 other organizations with 2.2 million of those $5 million to conduct this work. And we have contracted and begun intensive research with partners, including Cities GPS, a Brookings affiliated research firm to inform our collaborative decision making. Now, Ebony Benzing is going to walk you through some of the early information coming out of the data. While Ebony is from the Center of Excellence at Los Rios, she's also a critical member of the research team that is informing this initiative, but she has also been a critical member of just a research collaborative overall that informs our region's progress and investments. And I will hand it to Ebony. Okay. Thank you, Renee. All right, so let's get into it. So first up, Capital Region consists of about eight counties, ranging from our smallest neighbor, Calusa County, with about 22,000 residents and 9,000 jobs, to Sacramento County with 1.6 million residents and 722,000 jobs. The chart up here shows how connected we are as a region, with the lines and arrows indicating how and where our community members transition to for work. Overall, many workers in our region cross county lines for their jobs, with most of the commuting happening in two core areas, the Sacramento Metro area and the Yolo Yuba MSA. One of the most interesting things that I found was that while we do see workers commuting into Sacramento for work, we also have a sizable proportion of residents who leave the county for jobs. Most notably, they travel to places like El Dorado, Placer, and Yolo counties. What this suggests to me is that we really do need to have an intentional strategy focused on building up and ensuring that people can commute from where they live to where they work. We need to make sure that public transit is part of that strategy to ensure that people in our most marginalized communities have access to the same types of jobs that other people do with private modes of transportation. Up next, not only are we connected in terms of sharing workers across our region, but our counties tend to look similar both in terms of industrial and occupational mix. These charts show how similar one county is compared to a neighbor county, and a value of 100 would mean that those two counties are identical. 
The similarity values range from 72 to 93 for industries and 87 to 97 for occupations, showing that our county's economic structures are more alike than not. These findings suggest that it would be worthwhile to explore and develop common strategies for both workforce and economic development among counties that share a border with Sacramento County, but they also suggest that due to the higher level of similarity among our occupational mixes across the counties, our region overall would benefit from a common and shared workforce development strategy, so that would be essential. The chart here shows how demographics in the capital region have changed since 1980. These changes are projected out to 2050 on this chart. In the last 40 years, we've witnessed Sacramento transform to become a majority minority population with communities of color, including black, Latino, Asian, Pacific Islander, and native residents representing 52% of our population. At the same time, we've seen our region become increasingly unaffordable for many of the workers who live here. Families living in our region need a high level of income to cover basic cost living here. In our region, at least 38% of residents are part of families whose incomes do not cover the basic costs of living in this region. If you look at your tables, that's about four out of every people sitting at your table. Of this group, most residents belong to families with at least one working adult. That means 28% of the region's residents belong to families that are struggling to make ends meet despite having a job. Now, I found this really interesting because oftentimes in my line of work, I encounter two trains of thought around people working. One, if you're struggling, go get a job. Two, people don't wanna work. This data does not show that. We have working families who are struggling despite having that job. They are struggling but striving. And our struggling but striving working families outnumber our non-working families. So the solution for struggle can't just be go get a job. It has to be much more intentional and it has to be connecting those communities that do not have that access to good paying jobs that lifts them out of the struggle. Now this chart breaks down the share of struggling residents by county or subregion and shows that struggling but striving, working families are concentrated more in certain parts of our region than in other areas. The proportion of struggling but striving working families ranges from 20 to 36%, with the highest levels in Yuba, Sutter, and Calusa counties. In our region, children represent the largest age group living in struggle, struggling families. Over half of our region's children are growing up in families that do not earn enough to cover basic living expenses in our region. If you look again at your table, that's five out of every people sitting at your table, every 10 people. Now, 44% of those children belong to struggling but striving working families. Again, that's four out of those five children. So what this means is that we need strategies that target and uplift working families. More than half of struggling workers in our region are people of color. If we compare percentages of struggling workers to the demographic composition of our region, we also notice that people of color, especially Hispanics and Latinos, are overrepresented among the struggling workers. So we have to have strategies that intentionally target these communities that are overrepresented in these groups. Now, with all that said, there are multiple opportunities to uplift struggling but striving workers in our communities, and one of which is through an equitable focus and investment in the transition to the green jobs. The Centers of Excellence for Labor Market Research are currently researching green jobs, and we are looking into different methods for identifying and quantifying these jobs across the state. This data comes from a presentation that I did recently at the California Ford Summer Summit, and it uses a framework that comes from the Department of Labor's ONET to estimate how many green jobs we have in the state. Now, one of the things that I wanna point out about this data is that this is likely an overestimate because of how we define and how we figure out what jobs are green and which ones are not. It's a little bit challenging to be able to separate out green jobs from non-green jobs within a single occupation. So with that said, the state currently holds at the high end about 5.1 million green jobs, and this represents about 25% of California's, all of California's jobs. 
the potential universe of green jobs is projected to grow 7% through 2027. And we're projected to have more than 612,000 job openings each year for the next five years. The top industries for green employment across the state include what's so shown on these, uh, the chart and the table. It includes construction, manufacturing, the professional services sector, transportation and warehousing, and government. And lastly, this table shows the potential green occupations that have a large count of jobs across the state. Now, these occupations represent potential targets for workforce development strategies to uplift our struggling families. What we really need to do here is be very intentional about that job quality piece to be able to figure out what are those things we should be focusing on. So that kind of concludes what I have to share today. I'm gonna to turn it back over to Renee. It's so great to be presenting with Ebony. I'd like to do everything in my life forever together with Ebony. So what does this mean for our region? Ebony just shared um, quite a bit of data, some of it from Cities GPS, um, Brookings, and some of it from the Center of Excellence. Um, how do we make sense of this, and what does it do to help um, uplift our economic conditions here? We have a couple pictures um, on the slide there for you of some of the many convenings that have occurred and are occurring throughout the eight county California Jobs First region. Um, while this is an opportunity, while the state has invested an opportunity for inclusive economic development in regions throughout the state of California, this initiative does have a sunset in September of 2026. So what we're encouraging our region to do is to build a shared vision for economic prosperity that extends long beyond that date. To that end, we want to introduce you to We Prosper Together. This is going to be the official name for our regional effort moving forward. You might ask, why do we need two names? We have California Jobs First, which Renee can't seem to get right consistently. And now we have We Prosper Together. That's because California Jobs First is an initiative with an end date. And We Prosper Together is what we are hoping you will join in together with all of us to create that shared vision that Judith talked about earlier that's needed for us to create economic prosperity that's sustaining and uplifts all in our community. Thank you to those who participated in a survey to help us determine the name of this initiative and look forward to more information about this. So what's next? We want you to stay engaged. We've heard a lot from the stage um, from different folks about in order to have change occur, we need you to get involved. We need you to get engaged and stay engaged. Um, there's a QR code on the screen. If you aren't already receiving the newsletter for the California Jobs First Initiative, we would love for you to scan that. You'll be directed to Valley Vision's webpage with all of the information regarding that. You'll be able to find a place to sign up for the newsletter as well as get information on what has happened um, in that effort so far. We also encourage you to join in the sub-regional table, tables and convenings that are happening in your communities. If you don't know where those are, you can email us at cerf at valleyvision.org or you can let your table facilitator know, give them your information or your business card and they will connect it with us. I thought I accidentally advanced, just stay with me. Uh, we also want to ask you to consider a posture of openness and humility. So earlier in the day, we talked about community agreements. I don't know if you can hearken back to all of those, but it is really important as we embark upon building a shared vision together that we maybe throw out some of our thoughts about what that might look like. Collaborative processes are hard. Maybe you've tried it before and it didn't go so well, or maybe there's somebody you really don't wanna sit across a table with, but you would have to in a collaborative process. 
And I'm certainly not talking to you from this stage as someone who's got this all figured out. I have my challenges with this as well. But I think for all of us to get a different result, as we've all kind of talked about, that's what we want. We have to approach this work in a different way. So I know I'm checking this for myself. What's my posture? And I ask you all to do so as well. Are we being open and humble in our processes? Are we really listening to folks who are at the table? Are we inviting those that we want to hear from and need to hear from? And are we really listening this time to what it is that they have to say? We also want you to be an active champion of this work. In order for this to be successful, we need you to get involved, encourage other people to get involved, and champion this work going forward. I've heard a little bit about shared accountability. I also heard about that at the Community Economic Resilience Summit, or the California Forward Summit. I'm really interested in that as we move forward into action planning later in this process, because it's gonna take all of us to build this, and we're going to need to be accountable to each other to implement it and make sure that we're getting the results that we want. I heard Kevin Daniels say earlier today where are you, Kevin? He said, do you care enough? I thought that was a really important question. Do we care enough to do this work, to get a different result than what we've had before? At this point, we're gonna give you an opportunity to talk about what you heard and consider the concept of inclusive economic development at your tables. Your table facilitators, facilitators have a few questions to go over with you. We're gonna give you about 20 minutes to do that, and then we'll call you back to the main stage. Thank you for listening.